Hi, welcome to Why Are We Like This, a Heart Stopper podcast. I'm Ashley, she, her. And I'm Alyssa, she, they. And today we are here to talk about episode four, Secret. Welcome to mid-season. Mid-season, we are halfway through. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this episode, like all of the others, it was written by Alice Oseman <laughs> and directed by A. Ross Lynn. And fun fact, this is the first time that the IMDb and Netflix descriptions have been identical. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So uh, this is the one where, according to both IMDb and Netflix, Charlie and Nick agreed to keep their relationship a secret at school while Nick figures things out. Nick's friend Imogen asks him out on a date or as I would like to call it, the one with the proper full-on gay crisis and rugby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of rugby in this A one. lot of rugby. We, um, our previous episode was our Ask a British Person episode slash Ask a Rugby Player <laughs> episode. And man, I forgot everything. I'm sorry, Georgie. We love you. I forgot everything. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> I I feel okay. No, to to Georgie's credit, I feel like I have a slightly better grasp of understanding. Yeah. So that when I had to Google how scoring works, when they were talking about the different ways of scoring, I understood what they meant. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get to all of the rugby, yes. We start off right where we left off. Right where we left off. I love that the like, because normally like there's like some kind of audio that comes in before, like while they're doing the mm-hmm. like title cards and everything, like, not the title cards, the like production cards. I love that uh-huh. it's the sound of the rain. I love, mm-hmm. I love the like sound design of it. Yeah. And I also, I mean, it's it's also great because rain plays such a massive role in this episode in so many mm-hmm. ways. So we hear the rain and then it picks up with Charlie's just like incredulous, huh? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is hi. the last thing he thought that he was going to see yeah, on no. the other side of that. He door. thought it was going to be the fucking mailman or something. Some like door to door vacuum salesman or something. <laughs> right. And then we immediately get the title card. Yes. I think this one might be my favorite. Yeah? Yes. It's good. It's good. I just, I love the rain. Yeah. I love the way that the raindrops form the letters. Mm -hmm. I really like that shade of blue. That Mm -hmm. might have something to do with it also. I just, when I, like, when it came up, I was like, ooh, this might be my favorite. So it felt worth noting. It is a good one. Mm -hmm. I... I don't think that I've thought about rating them yet. I'll have to get back to you on that. But we it, is, should, it is one that sticks out in my mind. We should kind of flag that as something to think about for our season mm-hmm. wrap up is like all the title cards. Yeah. I like that idea. So Charlie pulls Nick inside. He's like, you're getting soaked. Come inside. But they still don't shut the door. They still don't. And I'm like, what? What? Like, no wonder Jane comes through in a minute, because, like, why has the door been open for, like, ten minutes? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't love Jane. I mean, at all. No. But in this scene, I don't love Jane. But I don't blame her for being like, excuse me. Yeah. You don't pay for the, 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 the like, energy for this yeah. home. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. <off> the door. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so we learned that Nick didn't check the weather before running to Charlie's house, and that is why he is soaking wet. Yeah, I love his face whenever Charlie asks, like, oh, ha- have you forgotten your coat? <laughs> Nick looks like he's forgotten how to talk, let alone remembering to bring a coat. Like, yeah. he has no idea how to form words at this point. Although, <laughs> you know, in a few scenes, um, Charlie is not one to judge. So, right. And we'll get there. <laughs> I have some things to say about some of Charlie's choices, but mm. we'll get there. Um. Anyway, so... Charlie kind of like jokingly calls Nick an idiot and Nick goes on a journey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like there's just this face journey that's happening. There's very clearly some like internal dialogue, which I like to imagine is yes, of course I'm a fucking idiot. You kissed me and I ran away and I didn't yeah. call you and I didn't text you and I'm a fucking idiot and now I'm soaking wet in your front hallway. <laughs> yeah. It really is a journey. It and- is. <laughs> 
he has gone on a journey to yes. be fair. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he wants to talk about last night. Enter Jane Spring. Wait, first, as soon as he says, so about last night, mm-hmm. Charlie deflates. And he is, like, folding in on himself and bracing himself mm-hmm. for the absolute worst. Yes, this is... Jane comes through. I... I I'm going to bring this up later, but, like, I feel like he just immediately starts practicing his apology speech. Yes. That he's probably been formulating all night. Oh, certainly. Certainly. Yeah. It's just, he fell asleep repeating that like a mantra. He woke up and was brushing his teeth repeating that. Mm-hmm. It's been the only thing in his mind since he yep. got home. And when Jane comes around the corner, he looks for just a split second. (laughs) He looks like a deer in headlights. Yeah. (laughs) He's like, oh, shit, my mom's here. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Jane didn't know that Nick was coming over. I will say he gets that deer in headlights look and then he recovers quite quickly Mm -hmm. because he has that. Yeah, he's here to pick up a jumper that he left last week real quick. Yeah. While Nick's brain is still doing the like spinny loading sign. (laughs) (laughs) And then Jane sucks. Yeah, but it does this does lead to I I think this is my favorite Nick admiring Charlie moment of, the, of season 1. Yeah. Because she says, you know, like, okay, but we're going to see your grandma, so like make it fast and also you could change out of your pajamas. Mm-hmm. And when she says that, Nick takes in Charlie in his pajamas and he fully like <laughs> blushes and is like having a moment about it (laughs) and then he looks up and charlie's looking at him and he gets so embarrassed that he got caught yeah (laughs) and it's just like so pure and there's like the like domestic vibe to it because he's like in his house and his pajamas and stuff and it's just like sweet and pure and i love that moment it's yeah that's really sweet i hadn't really picked up on that because i was too busy being mad about Jane and thinking <laughs> about how this is re- – because this is the first time that we see Jane. Yeah. And so they're doing a really good job of, like, planting this seed that kind of comes throughout in the comics of how she's really hypercritical of Charlie especially. I mean, he's she's hypercritical of Tori as well in, like, Solitaire and yeah. in the comics, but it really hits Charlie hard and – it's a really nice, like, subtle detail. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that the actress does a good job of the the nuance of you could have at least changed out of your pajamas. Like, yeah. it's not discussed and it's like she thinks that she's coming from a well-meaning place, but the in- impact therein is not good. So even though I don't like it, also, like, what fucking time is it? Like, how yeah. <laughs> how long has he had mm-hmm. to really change out of his pajamas? I mean, I like, I interpret it as, like, she's saying, like, oh, if you knew he was coming over, you could have at least changed before mm-hmm. he got here. But it's, like, fuck right the fuck off. Right, yeah. Like, he was brushing his teeth, so clearly, even if this, you know, I mean, obviously, we know that it's spontaneous. But, like, so clearly Nick is early or something because Charlie was still getting ready. Right. So I feel like there's some, like, suspension of disbelief there. I don't know. Yeah, for sure. On Jane's part. Sorry. Suspension of disbelief on Jane's part. I realized after I finished my sentence that that was not clear. (laughs) (laughs) Um, They go up to Charlie's room. Well, Nick says they should – Charlie says they should go up to his room, and Nick goes first. And then Charlie checks his hair in the mirror. Hair, yeah. Um. (laughs) Which prompted me to uh, bring up a side note because my husband and I were watching uh, the first three episodes last night because he said he wanted to watch it, finally. Mm-hmm. I'm so pleased. And we watched Meet, Woo-hoo! Crush, and Kiss. And during Kiss, when Charlie's at the party and he's checking his hair in the mirror before he finds Nick, Eddie said, uh, Charlie checks his hair a lot for someone whose hair style is, I just rolled out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not an inaccurate statement, but I love it. <laughs> like, I I love that him checking his hair a lot when he's around Nick is a character. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of parallels in this, I think. Yeah. In this episode. Mm-hmm. I wrote down a couple. Yes, I did as well. So Nick starts to take off his soaking wet hoodie <laughs> and it like slides his shirt up some and Charlie's eyes like go huge, huge and then to- they go down. <laughs> down, yeah, away. Abort mission. Do not look. <laughs> Pure panic. Yep. 
And Nick is wearing a Vans shirt, which he wears them mm-hmm. frequently, but I think this is the first time that I actually, like, noticed it. Clocked it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And Nick goes, he just says the word so, and Charlie immediately jumps in and has a speech. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, I didn't write it down word for word because the thought of doing that made me cry, and so I paraphrased. <laughs> um, But... Charlie says he wasn't thinking properly about what he was doing and that it was stupid and that he doesn't want to uh doesn't want Nick to feel awkward about it because it was all Charlie's fault. And then he says that he sh- he says I shouldn't have kissed you. And Nick looks so <sighs> sad. Yeah, his face crumbles. Uh, you know, I he just Hears that and immediately starts thinking that Charlie doesn't feel the same way. Yeah. You know what? The the feelings like flip in that moment where he's like, did I overstep? And then Charlie continues and it becomes clear that he thinks he's overstepped. Yes. And Char- the way that Charlie is spiraling out loud, mm-hmm. just it's so real. Yeah. It, it like the way he's like putting words in Nick's mouth. An assuming thing, like, I also, I've been in a bit of an anxiety spiral for the last couple of days. And so it just really spoke to me as like, as I've been working through that myself right now, Right, I'm yeah. like, this is exactly what I'm doing. It actually, <laughs> watching it this morning, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm doing that. I should, I should, um, <laughs> Oh, you know, no. apply my therapy skills <laughs> and coping yeah. mechanisms and stop doing that. Um, but like that's it's so easy to get sucked into yes, that spiral, though. Yes, but like the way that it's done, where he's like, "Um, I'm sh- you. You probably just felt pressured to kiss me, and you probably never want to talk to." And I'm like, "This is so good." And also the like, so like the writing, the dialogue is excellent, and Joe's delivery just yeah. seals the deal on how so excellent good. and how accurate it is. It's just like the way it's just. Literally, it's just coming from here out here. There's no filter. It's yep. just, oh, it's so good. It's so good. And he's he's like frozen in his spot, but he's also super fidgety. Yes. And like, it's, yeah, so he just like really sells the body language of it all it's too. It's so good. And like you can tell that Nick not only wants to like tell him that he's wrong, but also is like, I don't know what to do right now. Like, uh-huh. in terms of just, like, how do I help Charlie? Yeah. And <laughs> so he does the classic thing that you do when you want to get someone to <laughs> shut up. You grab them and you kiss them. <laughs> yes. But in a good and way, then, not in a shitty yes. way like Ben. Yeah, so this is one of the parallels that's, like, perfectly parallels to Boyfriend when Charlie is trying to stop Nick from yes. his nervous rant. I love them so much. I love them, yes. (laughs) Um, So anyway, he like grabs his face and stares into his soul. Like he is trying to telepathically communicate in that moment. Like you've got this all wrong. (laughs) Lovingly. Mm -hmm. And it also is like just a beat for Charlie to consent to. Yeah, yeah. He could have pulled away, you know, but... He took that beat to make sure it was okay first. And I think even after that beat where, like, Charlie stops and is, like, not pulling away or anything, there is this, Mm -hmm. like, little moment of hesitation on Kit's part where he just kind of, like, goes, but there's, like, a pause. Yeah. And then he re-enters the movement and goes into the kiss just, like, absolutely certain. And I loved it because it's this really subtle thing. Mm Mm-hmm. But – I think it does a really good job of telling us where Nick is at in his thought process and in his journey. Right. And then we get the iconic shot of Charlie up on his toes. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. Yes. And then as they're pulling apart, we see the sunshine coming through the window, like in between them. And I just, I loved the framing of it. It made me very, very happy. And their lips like are stuck together. Yeah. And then Nick starts apologizing. And then we get the iconic line that Nick is having a proper full-on gay crisis. Aren't we all, Nick? <laughs> yeah. And that's when Charlie's look goes from fully confused to sympathy. Yes. And like, right, I need to be here for this person in this moment yeah. at the elder gay of the situation. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> which, I mean, the way that Joe's face, like, 
looks in this whole scene. Like you, you see that shift. I'm very happy that Kit won an Emmy. <laughs> Can we now get one for Joe? For Joe, yeah, please. I, I get that they ch- made the choice to campaign for the two of them both to get lead actor, and that was a choice, and they had their reasons for it, for good or for ill. Mm-hmm. But can we please get Joe an Emmy for this show, please? Yeah, because his performance is also excellent, just so fucking good. Mm-hmm. And so, like Nick also spirals, but for me, it feels more like a catharsis, where mm-hmm. clearly he's been having this internal dialogue, and this is the first time he's able to process any of it out loud. Yeah, for sure. And Charlie is the only person he can do that with. And I, I, it definitely feels like he's unloading a massive weight. Yes, and you can like see it in his posture and his physicality mm-hmm. as well. And the, like the way that after he finishes all of it, he just breaks. Mm-hmm. Like it's, I my note is when Nick Nelson cries, I cry. Yeah, it's <laughs> because, really hard. <laughs> uh, because that that is a, a true statement about myself. <laughs> like it's. It's it just it feels so real and I I love everything about the way that Charlie at, like responds where he just like sits there and like it's just a look of like whatever you need mm-hmm. I'm here and then Nick just like goes and like breaks down on his shoulder and Charlie just has him yeah and it's like so gentle and tender in the ways that we've seen Nick be gentle with Charlie before right and I I love it um, and I just want to hold them and tell them it's all going to be okay. I also love the moment. That, so, like, the first time that he, like, falls into Charlie and starts crying, I feel like it was more of, like, he didn't really think about it. It just happened. Yeah. And then as he's laying there crying, he starts to think, like, oh, is this okay? <laughs> and he lifts up and mm-hmm. looks at Charlie. And Charlie just gives him the most, like, supportive and caring smile. Yeah. And he's, like okay, I'm all in. And so then he can finally just like let it all out and yeah. be safe and and not have to worry. And I- and It's just so beautiful. I know. And I just, I can't help thinking about how hard it must be to kind of like have your queer awakening be your best friend. Yeah. Because there's so many complicated things in that. Like at least for me, it was like, fucking like movie stars and celebrities and stuff and so there was no like risk in the ways in which i had to process things and we're gonna do a whole episode on this but like for this all to be happening and to be processing it in this way with the person that it's about yeah oh it must be so hard because i'm sure in this there's also this fear of like am i royally fucking all of this up and that's just a risk you have to take when it's someone that you're close to Mm -hmm. um which is another theme between Tao and L as well. Yes. Is that it's such a risk to take mm-hmm. and is it worth it? Yeah. So then it cuts to they're back down in that like front hall area because Nick is leaving and he starts to ask, is it okay if we, and Charlie finishes, keep this a secret. And Nick feels so guilty he, really he feels does. so bad. Yeah, he even looks away. Like, he can't keep looking at him. Mm-hmm. And Charlie says that it's okay. And, like, looking at his face, I I believe him. Mm-hmm. I, I can tell that there's, like, a bit of this, like, memory of what happened with Ben. But I also can tell that Charlie doesn't feel like it's the same. Right. And <laughs> Nick, like I said, can't look at him so he looks away and when he comes to look back at charlie he's handing him an umbrella and the like laugh that he like (laughs) soft laugh that he lets out like here i am thinking i'm asking him to keep this a secret and he's gonna tell me that he wants nothing to do with me but he says it's okay and gives me an umbrella (laughs) for my walk home of course this baby angel is gonna accept me (laughs) yes also can i talk about this umbrella for a moment yeah um, I have to credit our friend Nicolette for this, um, because she's the one who pointed it out to me. The umbrella is blue on one <laughs> side and yellow on the other side. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be a few more. I'm not going to go through the whole thing right now because I want us to like talk about the things that are happening. But at this moment, Charlie Hay- holds the umbrella out with the yellow side towards Nick and the blue side towards Charlie, which is interesting because if we associate any color with these children... Yellow is the Charlie color. Blue is the Nick color. And when Nick takes it, 
Nick has the blue side towards him, yellow side towards Charlie. And then Nick steps out and is standing under the blue side of the umbrella. And Very interesting. Yes, and then things happen, and I'll point out other things with the umbrella as they occur. The attention to detail that yes. they went into is yes. just, like, insane. Um, so they say goodbye, and Nick leaves. And within seconds, Charlie grabs his shoes yeah. without tying them. Uh-huh. And Which, like, <laughs> how did he run in those is what I want to so, know. Okay, no, here's the thing. In the next shot, when we see him running down the sidewalk, it looks like they're tied. I'm sure they were for the running shot. So, like, so I don't, like, there's, I don't know if it was a continuity error, if, like, they just, I don't know. Something. I think it was probably just to show the urgency that yeah. he tossed him on and went out. But then for Joe to actually be able to run down the sidewalk, they were like, okay, you can tie yeah. him. <laughs> run down the sidewalk in the rain. Yeah. Also, Sans coat or umbrella. So now we have the parallel of like Nick ran mm-hmm. after Charlie in the rain. Now Charlie's running after Nick. And it's so sweet. Yep. He catches up and Nick asks if he forgot something. <laughs> He's so confused. <laughs> and at this point, Nick is under the blue side of the umbrella still, and Charlie is under the yellow side of the umbrella. And Charlie, like, looks around to make sure that no one is watching and kisses Nick and then leaves. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Nick just has this giant smile on his face, which... um, He has never been happier. Never been happier. And we get another one of the rainbow lens flares. Mm Mm-hmm. And now, if you'll notice, Nick is standing under the like he's like right under the line the middle that separates yeah. the blue and the yellow but then when he turns to leave now he's under the yellow side and it's like the way that it moves like it's so clear how intentional it is that mm-hmm. like where the like blocking is underneath this umbrella and i right. love that <laughs> yeah <laughs> so cute yeah that's a good catch i hadn't really noticed uh, i knew that at the end, he was in between, like, kind of on the line of mm-hmm. it. But I hadn't paid attention to before. Just because him standing there in the rain, smiling like an idiot, is such an iconic yes. comic shot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shout out to Nicolette for pointing that out to me. Yeah. Um, smart. The first time we talked about Heartstopper, it was, like, one of the first things that we talked about the series. <laughs> I love that. Mm-hmm. So then we cut to Nick walking up to the picnic tables Mm -hmm. where Imogen is waiting. Mm -hmm. And she can immediately tell that something is different. (laughs) Yes. And she thinks it's his hair, which is super accurate. Kids are obsessed with whenever their friends or classmates change their hair. To like the point where, oh, (laughs) anytime in the morning, anytime there's a kid who has a haircut, who's gotten a haircut. They either, like, have a hat on that they refuse to take off or they have their hood up and we don't allow hoodies in our school. Dress code, whatever. And, like, as soon as the kids see it, they lose their shit. (laughs) Kids are obsessed. Or, like, even when, like, the teachers change their hair, if it's noticeable. Interesting. So, so like, just the fact that she assumed that it was his hair, kind of, I was like, yep, that tracks. (laughs) <laughs> um, but then Imogen is kind of like flirting by messing with his hair, which Nick doesn't like, which is relatable. I also don't like when people mess with my hair. Yeah. But he doesn't convey it very well because yeah. he's too busy on his Charlie high. Yeah. And like he like he kind of like from Imogen's perspective, it like you could get the Yeah, she misinterprets it yeah. as being directed towards her instead of Mm -hmm. just him being like almost like he's flirting back right exactly especially after she walks away and then turns around and he is still sitting there like (laughs) blushing and grinning like yeah that could that is understandably misinterpreted by Imogen yes and then we get one of my favorite Imogen lines it's because of the delivery um but she says don't worry I'm a highly qualified hairstylist of Oh. Hairstylist. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. <laughs> I love it. This is a super cute interaction, even it though is. we know that that it's not gonna like it's kind of like awkward and weird to mm-hmm. see, um, because we know like all the backstory, but a super cute scene. Yes. And then Imogen has to go because she remembers she has morning detention. Which I've never heard of. I haven't either. It seems less effective mm-hmm. because it's like 
I mean, I guess depending on like how how late is she? Because like if she was supposed to be there like hella early, yeah, then maybe I could see it being super effective. But like if it's just like thirty minutes before the school st- yeah, day I just, starts, yeah, I it's have like, whatever. I have a lot of questions because like my other thing is like you want the detention to be, I guess like it's like a social time, mm, fair, and with detention you want to be taking them out of a social situation which is like often why like my school we do lunch detention mm-hmm. where you get your food and then you go sit in a room and be sad right while all your friends are hanging out in social that events. sounds effective <laughs> for 50 50 yeah 60 <laughs> 40 yeah. but that 40 percent <laughs> makes sure you know that they don't care if they have lunch detention <laughs> Mm -hmm. um but so she leaves but she gets one last hair ruffle in and my whole body just goes yeah because i know i was like oh my sweet little clueless girl yes but like also at the same time like i do that also to eddie sometimes to be silly but normally Mm. i obtain his consent first but that's that's marriage for you (laughs) (laughs) Oh, so then we cut to another direct parallel mm-hmm. to our series open where Charlie is walking is down the hall, beaming, so happy on his way to see a cute boy. But this time his boy is there. Yes. And also the the shot in form mirrors the first time we see Nick because mm-hmm. the, the camera cuts away from Charlie and someone's in the way and then they move. Mm-hmm. And um, my my notes <laughs> for this scene say, and this is um in all caps. Nick looks so happy to see Charlie. I am not okay. Code blue, send help. I am unwell. I just they're so cute and so happy. <laughs> my note is <laughs> Nick. Can we keep this a secret? Also, Nick staring at Charlie, smiling from ear to ear, and blushing and giggling. <laughs> Yes. Not subtle, my guy. Yes. For the listeners who cannot see the Skype call right now, my mouth I was full of I, my mouth was full of tea, but I was just nodding aggressively <laughs> the whole time to what Ashley just said. Uh, they're so obvious. It's so oh, adorable. God, but they're so cute and so happy. I know. And I love them. And they're like actively not touching, but they also like can't stop looking at each other and, and giggling. They can't stop smiling. Like I'm like, yeah. My f- my cheeks hurt just looking at them. <laughs> right. <laughs> also, there's when <laughs> when Charlie walks into the classroom and he like pauses for a second and then he starts to walk. You can see a poster on the mm-hmm. on the wall there, and I misread it the first time. I thought it said burgers, and I was like. <laughs> what and i was like do they post like what's for lunch on the door of every class and i went back and it says glaciers so i need to get my eyes checked <laughs> like, that makes a lot more sense that does make a lot more sense because we've established that this is a science classroom <laughs> yeah and then we cut to higgs and tara and Elle are there and darcy is like arriving and goes to sit down and tara's just kind of like staring at darcy <laughs> yeah and Darcy's like with such like a her face is like very like mischievous and like yes I'm about to do something yes <laughs> and then Darcy's like what yeah and Tara kisses her and Darcy's like oh hi and Elle is like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> they're everywhere everywhere um, yeah so Tara and Darcy are getting bolder yeah um, and seeing Tara and Darcy being all cute and lovey in class prompts her to text Tao back that she misses him too. The pining is so strong. Yes. They're in love even if they don't know it. Mm -hmm. I think they do know it. They just are scared to admit it. Um, (laughs) And then we cut to everyone's favorite art teacher. Oh my god, he's so good. (laughs) He's great. I love him. I At three different points in the last 24 hours, I have stated that Mr. Ajay, Isaac, and Tori are all my favorite characters. Nice. <laughs> but they're my favorite character. Like, full. St- I'm like, oh my god, I love Tori. She's my favorite character. Oh my god, I love Mr. Ajay. He's my favorite character. <laughs> oh my god, I love Isaac. He's my favorite character. <laughs> but, so, Charlie 
comes to the art room and passes by Mr. Ajay, who's like, there's a boy in there waiting for you. And he's like, which one is it? Is it the secret boyfriend or the straight boy crush? And I wrote, uh, well, and I said, this is Charlie. This should be Charlie's inner monologue. Well, the straight boy crush turned out not to be straight. And so now he's my secret boyfriend, but in a good way, not in a shitty way, like the last secret boyfriend. But instead of that, Charlie says, he's on the rugby team. I joined the rugby team. <laughs> and the way he says it, like, so dreamy when he's like, he's on the rugby team. And he's like, I joined the rugby team. <laughs> it's great. And Mr. Jaw, he is like, mm, mm, of, of course, course you did. <laughs> so good. His face is perfect. Yeah. He's the best teacher. Um, then he tells them not to get crumbs on the floor or else he'll get told off by the cleaners. Again. Again. Which... I think was just his way of saying, well, don't make a mess making out in my art room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> at Nick says he missed Charlie. And then Charlie's like, but we saw each other in form like four hours ago. But four hours is a lot in high school time. Yeah. Especially when you're like crushing on someone really hard. Mm-hmm. <sighs> and they start holding hands under the table still. Featuring four chewed up wads of gum. Yeah. <laughs> Which I bet I wrote accurate. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, it is a truth universally acknowledged that every school table has several yeah. chewed up wads of gum. One of those was really fresh, though. Like, same day yeah. fresh. It was gross. I was I'm like, sad you know that. <laughs> I am also sad that I know it, but it is a fact <laughs> of life when you teach yeah. tweens and teens. For sure. They're just, they're so cute, flirting. I love them. And Nick says Mr. Ajahi was giving him evils before Charlie got there. And Charlie admits that Mr. Ajahi knows about Ben and the keeping him a secret thing. And when he says that, Nick's face completely falls. All of that guilt he's been pushing down comes right, right straight up to his face. Uh, Charlie reassures Nick that what Ben did is not the same as what they are doing, which is true. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I've i been there where I've experienced or like been in a situation where I've known about abuse or other like kinds of mistreatment. And I've just been hyper aware of anything that might even look slightly like that. And the thing that a lot of people always say is like, well, the fact that you're aware of it means that, that you're not doing it. Um, like the fact that you're worried about this is a good sign. And right, yeah. I wish that I could tell Nick that, like, dude, this is not the same. Yeah. But uh, all of his guilt. And he, like, pulls, slips his hand out of Charlie's a little yeah. bit. And Charlie's like, no, 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 no. And, like, pulls him back. <laughs> yeah. And squeezes his fingers and is like, this is not the same. You're nothing like him. And Nick concedes, but he still looks very worried and uncomfortable. Yeah. And I mean, like, I know a lot of it is not even just, like, that he's asking Charlie to keep it a secret. Like Ben asked him to keep it a secret, but also the guilt of like, God, what's wrong with me? If only I could figure my shit out, we wouldn't have mm -hmm. to keep this a secret. Cause the big thing is that he doesn't know like right. what this is for him mm -hmm. yet. And that really is the big thing. Like he is not ready to come out as anything because he doesn't know what anything he is. Yeah. And there, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of like different layers to the guilt, and I just want to hug him and tell him that it's all okay. I know his little face. <laughs> Kit is so good at looking sad. Yeah, and making me sad. It's true. So then we go to rugby. Rugby practice, and Charlie is too scared to tackle anybody. Yeah. And Nick and Charlie are on the same team because they both have on the yellow bibs. Ooh, nice. I didn't notice that. But Otis is, like, really frustrated. <laughs> Apparently it's the third yeah. time that Charlie is kind of, like, noped out of tackling someone. Um. <laughs> I love that line delivery. For the, it's <laughs> for the third time! It's so good. And it's so good. Otis is, is not a large person. Otis is like a small, no. compact person. And like, it just like explodes out of him. 
<laughs> yeah, and your his arms go out. He's like, ah! <laughs> it's great. So good. I laugh so, every time. Yeah. My, my note says, Otis is frustrated. Harry sucks. <sighs> and then Coach Singh tries to be helpful. So apparently, Charlie has to play in the match with St. John's next week because Kieran has an apparently unavoidable dentist appointment (laughs) and Charlie (laughs) will need to play. And Charlie says he'll be fine. And Coach Singh uh, gives the advice to try not to worry about getting hurt and just throw yourself into it. Um, And I'm like, excuse me, Coach Singh, have you looked at Charlie? He is a twig. If he throws himself into something, every bone in his body will break. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and Charlie, Charlie says that it's hard to be confident when everyone thinks you're a stereotypical gay boy who can't do sports. And I have feelings about what Coach Singh says. I think she's personally offended because she's an obvious lesbian. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so Coach Singh says a lot of gay people do sports and like definitely there's like a little bit of like, uh, like offendedness to it and in the comics we know that coach Singh is married to a woman we don't know if she's Mm -hmm. bi or a lesbian but she does give off more lesbian vibes but Mm -hmm. and i so what i wrote was um that number one i'm really excited to get more coach Singh development in the future Mm -hmm. i'm really excited to get more everybody development in the future though i'm ready for all of the yeah teachers in season two give me more yes um and then i was like I get what she's trying to say, but there is a disconnect because number one, there is a difference between like the stereotypical gay boy and the stereotypical lesbian. And I think that there's more space for for lesbians to be perceived as athletic. Mm -hmm. That is not the case with, especially using the phrase gay boy, like instead of like gay, like it's just, it's very, the phrasing And I'm like, I get what you're trying to do here, but you're not being as reassuring as you think you are. And also because the thing is, her comment doesn't actually address his concern. Because he says it's hard to be confident when everyone thinks you're a stereotypical gay boy. Not that he is a stereotypical gay boy who can't do sports. So the, the problem, it's not that he thinks he isn't good. It's that the rest of the team thinks that. Yeah. And that's what's getting into his head. because. In that montage in Meet, we see Charlie, like, increase his confidence as a rugby Mm -hmm. player. And really the thing that's fucking with him is Harry being a dickhead. Yeah, yeah. And her tone doesn't help. It's judgmental and it's harsh. Mm -hmm. She's taking it personally in a way that, like, I very much am like, you mean well, but your execution, poor. (laughs) Also... When it cuts to um, her telling him that he has cone duty and they start to have Mm -hmm. this conversation, his yellow bib is gone and everybody else still has theirs on in the background. So I want to know where his bib went. (laughs) I wonder if that's just a continuity error. (sighs) Probably. Or if he stopped playing. I'm going to assume it was a continuity error. (laughs) Yeah, I don't see him stopping. Even after the Uh, Otis's blowout, I still think he would have kept going. Yeah. Um, And then we see Charlie practicing on what I have very accurately described as a tackle practice dummy thingy. (laughs) And now Eddie played football in high school. And so I summoned him while I was watching this. I summoned him into the room and I was like, what would you call that thing? Um, (laughs) Because, you know, football, American football is a tackling sport. So I was like, You've probably used these. Um, and he was like, I don't know. But he in- he looked it up, uh, which I had no interest in doing because where's the fun in that when you could say the tackle-y, <laughs> practice-y, dummy thingy? Right. <laughs> um, but apparently it's called a tackle <laughs> Apparently it's called a tackle bag. Um, tackle bag. Which is boring. That's a boring name. Yeah. It's, a, it, it's an apt right. name, but it's boring. And yeah, so we just get this like little montage of him running and tackling this dummy. And I think it's so fitting that the song that's playing is called Heart. Yes. Because he does have a lot of heart. And yeah, he joined the rugby team for Nick. But now he's a part of the team and he doesn't want to let his team down. He doesn't want to let his coach down. Yeah. So he is going to try to ramp himself up and get ready for this game where he plans to make an actual effort. Um, and so 
solid song choice. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. And then we go to Hicks. And we're going to play a game oh that I like to call <laughs> Spot the Gay. Because <laughs> we see these two conversations. And each of these conversations, one of the people involved is definitely queer. <laughs> and just not out yet. <laughs> I love this so much. Um, so the first group, we have some like older students, presumably around the same age as our as our main characters. And the first one says, well, apparently they were kissing at Harry's party, like properly kissing. And then the second girl says, yeah, well, <laughs> some girls who are friends just do that. Just do that. <laughs> Said every baby gay ever. Every yes, and I, I love the look that the first girl gives. That she like kind of like rolls her eyes and is like, um, <laughs> yeah. no, <laughs> no, like, <laughs> like what the fuck are you talking about? Um, and then we cut to some younger girls who I would say are probably like middle school aged, so like mm-hmm. 12, 13 ish. And the first one says, actually, when you think about it, there are twelve hundred people at the school, so at least a few of them are going to be lesbians. <laughs> and this then is my this, favorite. And then this adorable baby girl, this adorable child, says, "Maybe you're a lesbian, and you have no idea." And her eyes are so wide, oh. and the other girl's mind is blown. blown. She's like, "Fuck!" Although, okay, so it's very clear who the gay person in the previous conversation is. Which one of these two girls do you think is the gay person, and is it both of them? I think it's both. I think it's both of them. They're the two of them are gonna make out before they graduate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're the like friends, like the lifelong friends who end up dating and then it ends horribly, and that is their lesbian origin story. Yeah. Because everyone has one. <laughs> everyone has that one friend who you fall in love with and it's a disaster. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um that is that is the headcanon I have about these two uh, little tweens here. <laughs> I also love the fact that these, like, extras or, like, you know, these, like, background actors in 30 seconds make enough of an impression for us to be able to yeah. have this conversation. Right. It's just really good attention to detail. <laughs> so good. And presume, I, I want to credit A. Ross a lot for that because when you're working with young actors like that, especially, like, presumably unexperienced background actors – a lot of that yeah. comes down to the, the direction. Yeah. And so it's really, really well done there. Mm-hmm. So then we cut to the cafeteria and everyone is staring at Tara and Darcy. <sighs> and whispering. And whispering. And just like being very, like, it's very obvious that everyone is talking about them. Yep. And Darcy looks really annoyed, but Tara looks like she's trying to fold in on herself and disappear. Yes. Tara is on the struggle bus. And I want to hold her. Which we have to remember that Darcy's out and has been out. Yeah. And this is really. And so this is really probably Tara's first experience Mm -hmm. of like in-person discrimination like this. Yeah. And it's really weighing on her and you can see it. Yeah. And then Imogen comes up just to add insult to injury. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) This Imogen. This I. This is this is an ex. I. This is peak Imogen. There are other like Imogen moments in later episodes that I like more because of like the character development. But this is right. peak Imogen yes. Minnie right here. I love her attitude. I love her line delivery. The way she's like, um, <laughs> you guys have this all wrong. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. But like. So she wants to know if Tara and Nick are a thing or if she's with that girl uh, you kissed at Harry's party. (laughs) Ooh, that really tears Darcy up. That pisses Darcy off. She says, Tara literally kisses her girlfriend at a crowded party and people are still asking her if she's dating a guy she kissed once when she was 13, which excellent line delivery. Kizzy, killing Mm -hmm. it. This is a great Darcy episode. It is. It really is. Kizzy kills it. I mean, Kizzy always kills mm-hmm. it. But this is a great yeah. Darcy episode. They have. This is like one of several great line deliveries from this episode. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> and Imogen just wants to. She's just like, I just wanted to check because me and Nick are like basically together. <laughs> 
Yeah. Which, my sweet, sweet clueless girl. <laughs> I love that, like, Elle calls her on it, and she immediately yeah, dials like, it back. And then she's like, but we look cute together. And she shows this picture, and Nick just looks uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm like, they don't, like, what are we, why are we taking this like, photo? Just- <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, they're on two very different pages. Oh, yeah. And then we get the greatest image in line. Where she says, I'm not, like, homophobic. I'm an ally. <laughs> <laughs> Tara and Darcy are having none of it. They are over it. Yes. Um, but I, so I actually wrote down, like, Tara says, congratulations. Darcy says, we thank you for your service. And then I say, okay, but, like, Imogen, do you mean ally is an actually straight and actually an ally? Or at least someone who thinks they're an ally? Or ally as in figuring shit out and actually queer? Because I was totally an ally in high school, too. Uh And look how that turned out. (laughs) So I'm, like, I'm, like, on the fence about Imogen because... Obviously, I want more queer characters, but also I really like the idea of, like, Nick's straight girl best friend. (laughs) I do love that, but I also already ship Imogen and Sahar, so. I know. I just, like, feel the same amount both directions. Yes. So, I guess I'm going to be pleased either way they go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I could get bi-girl vibes from Imogen. Yeah. Like, I can see it, especially with her hair. That's bi-girl hair. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Yeah, the hair is... But also, I have a question. Uh-huh. Everybody knows that it was Tara, but no one knows Darcy's name. Like, why is it Tara and some girl? I know. That's weird. It's not like they weren't best friends. Like, everyone should know that that's Darcy, who's always with Tara anyway. Like, yeah. It's a weird that no one is using Darcy's name. Yeah. It's peculiar. So we go to Trua, and Tao and Isaac are eating lunch, and <laughs> God, I fucking hate Tao. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tao thinks that Charlie is eating lunch with Nick and that he's been eating lunch with Nick a lot. Isaac is reading A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson, uh, which is the first book in the that trilogy. And my note here says, that's a good book. The end of the third one goes a bit off the rails, but it's an enjoyable read. Uh, this is definitely a lighter read for Isaac, even though it's a trilogy that's a murder mystery and has lots of suspense and tension. Like I read it in a weekend. So oh, okay. for Isaac, like it's, it's, a, it's going to be a quick read for him. And actually he's reading an entirely different book later in this episode. So I, I, I thought that was interesting that they chose to do that. But then I, Isaac, he's like, well, they're in the honeymoon phase. Um, and Tao is like, it's not <laughs> like they're dating unless they are. <laughs> Unless they are, which is his way of being like, open your fucking eyes, bro. Oh, my God. (laughs) I love Isaac. I actually – what I wrote here was he is incredible and wise beyond his years, probably from all the books. In The Great Gatsby – this is – okay, I'm I'm turning on my, like, English major (laughs) teacher thing right now. In this essay, I will. (laughs) Um, So in The Great Gatsby, there is a character who appears in only two scenes called, and and the the narrator of the book, Nick Carraway, nicknames this person Owl Eyes for several reasons. The most obvious of which is that he has like big, like Coke bottle kind of glasses that make his eyes look big like an owl's. However, Mm -hmm. it's The Great Gatsby, so everything is symbolism. Um, and the other thing with calling him Owl Eyes is because this character, like, represents, like, perception and seeing the truth, um, and speaking that truth in a lot of ways, and Isaac reminds me a lot of Owl Eyes. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know those, like, characters that stick with you? Mm -hmm. Owl Eyes is one of them. Like, he just keeps coming up in my brain, just like... (laughs) But yeah, Isaac very much this kind of like perpetually around, but kind of in the background kind of character who sees everything Mm -hmm. and knows what's going on. Yeah, He knows what's up with Nick and Charlie. He knows what's up with Tao and Elle. He see he's he's incredible and wise beyond his years. Yeah. I love him. Nick walks up with the rugby boys, which tells us that Charlie's not with Nick. Obviously. So where is he? Why is he hiding alone? Where is Charlie? And I I still don't get the, like, 
vitriolic hatred that Tao has for the rugby boys. It's just, it's like such a deep seated, like core tenet of his identity that he hates the rugby boys. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, a lot of it goes back to Charlie's bullying. Yeah. And Harry being Mm -hmm. like what the biggest bully in school, basically. But like none of the rugby boys ever do anything to stop him or jump in in any way. And so I would lump them all together too. That's fair. Even though it's not the whole team that's that's singling me out, there the others are basically supporting him by sitting yeah. around and laughing. Um, and I think that makes sense, especially in high school. Your emotions are like intense about everything. Yeah. So even just like someone who like says one thing to you one time, you're gonna hate them for a while. Yeah. Imagine it being constantly every day, multiple times a day. So that's fair. I think I get. I get it. I also just don't like what happens now (laughs) like i don't like this moment um it makes me angry um so harry nick and like half of the rugby team walk past and harry being the piece of shit that he is throws Mm -hmm. the rugby ball towards tau and isaac tells them to catch it and it hits tau in the head presumably on purpose because harry is good at rugby um right nick goes to pick it up and, like, is trying to be nice and make sure Tao is okay. And Tao refuses to give the ball back and says, no, it's mine now. Like, it very much has this, like, tone and this air of, like, I have the power in this moment. And if I can't have Charlie anymore, then you can't have the ball. Which is stupid. But, like, I also can see that being, like, angry high school teenager logic. Um, so Nick just like walks away. Like he's not gonna fight. He sees, you know, he sees that this isn't worth the time or energy. And he walks away and Tao throws the ball at the back of his head. Why? Hard. Yeah. And I'm just like, why? I'm like, Nick, why? <laughs> I just I why, Tao? Why? And I know the answer is that Isaac it, is uncomfortable. <laughs> oh yeah. I know the answer is just like teenager testosterone bullshit but it it makes me mad i don't like it and like to get back at them for throwing it at him first and all of that but then also a devil's advocate like nick shouldn't have rejoined that like he should have left just yeah somewhere else instead of going back it's a bad look for nick yeah um and you know he's like really worried about impressing Tao and yeah. Charlie's friends and so there's all this like whirlwind of emotion going on in him like he doesn't want to give his friends any clue that mm-hmm. anything is off but he also like yeah Nick is to- Nick is in a really difficult position in this scene and I like I end up feeling like I th- and I think that the the episode is trying to make us feel this way, but I end up like feeling more empathy mm-hmm. for Nick in this scene than I do for Tao. Um, also, just the way that Kit acts with his fucking back turned. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, God fucking damn it! <laughs> hmm. But I, yeah, I, I have a lot more empathy for Nick in this moment than I do for Tao. But like, also, like we've established yeah. that I don't like Tao. Tao. Yeah, he's, make, he's nice. making it really hard. Like, I'm like, I understand where you're coming from, dude, but you're making it really hard for me to feel for you. And if I were Tao's teacher, I know exactly what I would say to him in this instance. And I tell him, I'm like, yes, I understand that you're frustrated, but retaliating and like pushing back like this isn't going to accomplish anything except getting you in trouble as well. And that's just going to make you more upset. Then we pull up outside St. John's and they are doing their warm up run. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And all of Charlie's friends are coming, which is so nice. So, the way that Nick says, All all of your friends are coming, you know, he's like, Shit, okay, Mm Tao's coming then. So, has he told Charlie about this altercation? Like, am I in trouble? How do I make it better? What's going on? And then Charlie's like, Don't worry, I won't say anything about us. And he says, Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. Thanks. Because that is the last thing that was on his mind in this yeah. moment. I also think, too, there's, like, this little bit of concern of all your friends are coming and you're going to get your 
ass kicked. Because especially with the way that Nick is like, oh, yeah, I'm like, oh, he wasn't thinking about it from that angle. I was like, Mm -mm. oh, you know that St. John's is... Why did no one warn Charlie? I know. I'm like, I, it's, I, I think it was so that they could make the literal adult men joke, but I, <laughs> but he yeah, someone should have told him. Especially as the reserve that's playing his Against first game this ever? fucking doped up school of professional athletes. <laughs> I, Jesus. so anyway, before we get to that, um, <laughs> Harry, I, I, so I, you're gonna have to fill in the gaps because my only note about Harry coming up here just says "fuck off, Harry," and I didn't write anything else down. What happened? <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, he comes up and tells Charlie that they're counting on. Him oh, today. right, right, right. Basically, poking yeah. his insecurities. I think he says like you're not gonna chicken out. Oh, on yeah, or something. yeah. And then he's like, "We're all counting on you." Fuck off, Harry. <sighs> yeah. And then the gang is here. And then the gang is here. And Charlie goes to say hi and meets Tara and Darcy. And I love Darcy's whole look. The braids, the outfit. I love yes. it. It's great. I want it. I wish that I could French braid my hair. Yeah. The backpack, Perfect. everything. Um, so good. Uh, Darcy announces that she's mainly here to get acquainted with the local gays. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. tracks? Um, I mean, mainly she. I think mainly she's here because Tara's here, <laughs> right? But um, then she says that Charlie and Nick are looking suspiciously coupley, <laughs> and Charlie is not. He so, freaks he the freaks fuck out. out. He's worried. Like, what if there have been rumors? She says no, nothing but my gay intuition says that he and Nick are totally platonic good friends. Which is totally a thing that platonic good friends say about each other. <laughs> but also that's another um, Kizzy line line read that's so good when good. they're like, <laughs> are you friends? Friends. Like, friends. <laughs> it's excellent. It's excellent. But Nick is standing there stretching and he's watching all of this happen. And you can see that he's like slowly dying so on bad. the inside a little bit. Because this is Nick fucking Nelson who mm-hmm. wears his heart on his sleeve and he's not used to hiding anything, his emotions or, you know, his feelings. And so this is yeah. really hard for him. And he also, it also comes with all the baggage of Charlie's past history. And so while it's also eating away at him that he can't like, that it's just like hard not to express stuff. It's like, how yeah. much am I hurting this person also? And then Imogen comes by arm in arm yeah. with Ben. Yeah, which why? why? My note is honestly for someone who is trying to get with Nick, she's doing a real good job of looking yeah. like she's into Ben. Maybe that's why yeah, he's so clueless. Maybe. I also so what's really funny is because Eddie and I were watching the first three episodes yesterday, and Eddie actually at first thought Imogen was the girl that Ben was kissing. Ooh. Um, she's not, but like it's a. I feel like it's a. You could you easily could, yeah. mistake I could that. See where, and yeah. and I had to like clarify it and like it changed the entire read of the situation. Um Eddie was like really confused why she was flirting with with Nick. Yeah. He was like, wasn't she just kissing <laughs> Ben? <laughs> but yeah, no, she's very Yeah, because she's always near him yeah, and I think him, she's just I a very like touchy that. person. And I'm very Yeah, she is. And I'm super interested to see like what they do yeah. with that in mm-hmm. season two. But I'm also just really interested to see what they do with any of that, any of the Ben stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, there's just so many things where I'm like, what are you doing here? Not in a bad way, just yeah. in like, a, I trust you, but I don't see the vision yet. So the game starts and Charlie asks why the St. John's players are literal adult <laughs> men. And Nick explains that it's a specialized sports school. Which um, I guess just means it's okay to give your students anabolic steroids because that's the only right. way that? that these people look like this. I, number two has scary thighs. <laughs> that was one of my notes. Number two's thighs are scary. <laughs> They're so thick. I like it, but it, yeah, no, I'm like, what? I'm like, huh? Tara and Darcy are also concerned about the largeness of the St. John's players. Like, they run past, Mm -hmm. and they just, like, Tara just goes, oh. Also, I really like Elle's Yeah, the little hair band, the, the, like, blue and and yellow bands are really, really cute. The the game starts, Nick does, like, a kickoff 
thingy. That's the technical term. Uh, <laughs> right, Georgie? That's the technical term. And <laughs> then Im- we see Imogen cheers. Come on, Nicholas. Come on, Nicholas. <laughs> she always calls him Nicholas, and it's weird. I think she thinks that that's flirty, but it's just kind of weird. And Ben says, Harry, don't let the game go soft. And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? I don't know what it means, but I think he just wanted to say Harry and soft in the same <laughs> sentence. <laughs> you know, that's no, this is uh, no, I'm not even gonna say I, I, <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't. No, it's I'm just like, with the, I, I think what it's trying to, I think what he's trying to say is like, this is gonna be a hard game, don't let it just be this other school wiping the floor with you guys. I think that's yeah. what he means, but it's weird. That sounds right. Yeah. It's a weird yeah. way to put it. Yeah. Um, Tau L, Isaac, Tara, and Darcy do not remember the rules of rugby. <laughs> Me either. My note says, as much as Georgie told us, I still have no idea what's yeah. going on here. <laughs> um, but it doesn't take an expert to know that this is not going well for the Truem boys. No. They're just, they're getting tackled left, right, and center. It's, it's rough. rough. And then it starts to rain. I like the little score cards that come up a couple times. Uh, The first one says St. John's 14, Truum 0. At which point I realized we forgot to ask Georgie about how rugby scoring works. A very important question. But I looked it up because I I, I had a hypothesis that – because I was like, okay, so – St. John's score is 14. So I was like, does this work like football scoring? And the short right. answer is yes. It works like football scoring. So Got essentially, it. you get five points for a try, which is essentially a, what we would understand in American football as a touchdown. And then you can essentially kick a field goal for two more points. And then there's other ways to score points, but that was irrelevant to uh, my current hypothesis. <laughs> something something penalty kick something something three points um <laughs> yeah yeah points. that part was more complicated but for for our purposes we only need to know that the scoring essentially works the same as football um if that is an oversimplification i apologize i did not sports well i i was a competitive swimmer but it's a very different <laughs> thing you know I didn't sports yeah, ball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, as soon as the rain starts, my first thought, the first time I watched this was, oh my God, I hope Isaac has a backpack for his book. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I didn't notice the book until a little bit later, but the, the book we see uh, soon is well protected. The book is okay. Yeah. So anyway, so we see Charlie get tackled and Nick just calls out in concert. I'm like, dude, you're trying to keep it a secret. Yeah. You're not doing it's a good job. Instant. And it's so filled with worry too. Like it's it's very obvious that Nick is very concerned yeah. about Charlie. Um then we see all of Charlie's friends are also very worried and then we see Ben laughing. And Imogen doesn't laugh but she doesn't not laugh also. It's not not a good look. Yeah. But I feel like for Imogen, also, it's just like she doesn't have any like interaction or history with Charlie, so yeah. But I'm sure she's heard them talk. Oh shit yeah, about definitely. Him. And everybody, he gets up and everybody yells, you know, yeah, Good job, Charlie. And Tara tells him to <laughs> shake it off, shake it off. <laughs> My next note is about Harry saying that number 14 has a crush on Charlie or something. It was a weird interaction. And I was like, this obviously Harry is playing mind games, but for why? Um, So then at this point is where I noticed that Isaac had a book, uh, which relatable. I cannot tell you how many of my brother's soccer games I brought books to. Um, But (laughs) the book he's reading, right? Noticeably is not one of the good girls guide to murder books. It is Proud, My Autobiography by Gareth Thomas, who apparently is a retired gay rugby player. Oh, he's doing research. Yes, and I love it so much that this is so such an Isaac way of trying to support his friend. It's like, I know yeah. shit about Aww. this, so I'm going to read a book 
about rugby. And of course, the one that he chooses is the autobiography of the gay rugby player. Presumably not the only right, one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. That's cute. It's so sweet. And that was actually the intention behind it. Because that article that I'm always talking about um, talked about how they wanted it to be like Isaac is trying to like learn more about rugby in order yeah. to support Charlie. Buddy, I love that. So sweet. I love him. I love all of them, except yeah. how. Um, Who's panicking oh, yeah. at this point? Because Harry has his arm Charlie, around. And he's Charlie. like really worried. And Elle tries to be positive and says that maybe they're friends, <laughs> uh, which we know is false. But also Tao says that that would be worse because then Charlie would bring the entire rugby team to film nights and make them watch Avengers. Uh, to which I said, that's only fair for making them watch Donnie Darko. Because <laughs> Donnie Darko is a good movie, but it's fucking weird. And so... Yeah, it's it's a yeah. lot to get through. But Elle has to put him in his place after that. Yes. Oh my god, yeah. I Tao tells Elle to take this seriously <laughs> because their friendship group is falling apart. And Elle is having none of it. None of it. And then I said, which is good because I too am having none of it. If anyone is creating rifts in the friendship group, it's Tao, not Charlie. Um, and yeah, she's like, I didn't come here to face all of the true boys who used to bully me for you to say that everything is falling apart. And I'm, mm -hmm. we're all here yeah. together right now. How yeah. are we falling apart? Just because you're feeling insecure in your relationship with Charlie. And I'm at a different school. Does it mean that we're falling yeah. apart? But I also like when I think about it, like so much of like how you make friends and how you interact with your friends in high school is just based on proximity and like doing like That's being true. in the same classes going like so like I can't I kind of get it. But I'm also just like, no, I think I would have more space for it if we hadn't already seen him be oh, like this nonstop definitely. and like you know if this was the first or second time we had him acting like this i could hold more space and i'm, and I'm an <laughs> apologist i could hold yeah. more space for it but it's uh it's, it's not, not a good look man it's and not. it just i like the whole time like every time he says stuff i'm like tau all you're doing is like creating a self-fulfilling prophecy because you're mm -hmm. gonna create you're gonna be the cause of it because you're convinced it's happening. Uh, so then we see the score is now 35 nothing. <laughs> um, yeah. And Charlie Whoa. gets tackled again. And he goes down hard. hard. And his nose is bleeding. And he's like... Yeah, shaking. like it's it's not a good hit. Which he's probably fucking cold. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, the, the rain is really bad. So when this happens, Nick freezes and flashes back to the conversation that they have at the beginning of the episode where he asks if they can keep it a secret. And I said, presumably because he wishes he could do something to help Charlie without outing himself. Yeah. Because he, he screams mm -hmm. his name and then looks up and he looks at Ben and all of them standing over there laughing. And then he looks at Charlie's friends and that's when it zooms in on him because he's like, everyone's here i can't yeah. do anything and in nick's memory charlie looks a lot more upset <sighs> it just breaks my heart and also like in the flashback we have like the rain mm -hmm. like animated onto the screen and we hear the rain and yeah so then we cut back and coach Singh calls the game because the rain is too dangerous and i have two questions first question why didn't the ref call the game where is the ref? <laughs> and then my other question is, is Coach Singh calling the game not just a forfeit? I mean, they were losing it. They were 35 to nothing at that point. Yeah, I'm just, but I'm like, well, because later on, Nick says the match was canceled. N like, I'm like, so, so, so does it just not count? Is this how is, I'm like, how is this not just Coach Singh forfeiting mm. the game? I'm sure that's what it came down to. Like in the, I, I, I would have to assume so in like the official records. Not that it would matter much because they were going to lose anyway. Right. <laughs> Who fucking knows? I just, it was weird. 
I also want to point out that while Nick is frozen and it's like going back and forth, you can see Harry in the background surprisingly not laughing and actually looking at Charlie like a little bit concerned. And I was like, interesting. I wonder if that was a mistake. Well, I'm filming, also like, or I could hold space for like, you see someone go down like that. And there is like a visceral like response that you have when yeah. something like that happens. I just don't. Yeah. Harry yeah. That response, I think, typically. <laughs> I don't know. It's, I didn't pick up on that, but I feel like it could, I feel like it could go either way. I feel like Cormac yeah. is good enough at being like a slimy piece of shit that I don't think that it would slip. Yeah, so I don't yeah. know. Then we go to the medical office and Nick is checking on Charlie. And he sits down next to him, pressed up against his Right, side. yes, right up against him. Yep. Thigh on thigh. Says his nose looks fine. Uh, but that he's got mud on his face. <laughs> Which I'm like, <laughs> you both have mud all over your everything. This all is, over you, yeah. Like, clearly this is just Nick wanting to have, like, a tender moment to, like, dote on and take care of yeah. Charlie. Because he takes, like, a tissue or a wipe or something and is, like, cleaning his cheek. It's so cute. And Charlie's looking at Nick like he hung the fucking moon. He's, like, batting <laughs> his eyelashes. Oh, my him. God. It's, <laughs> it's so cute. But then Charlie apologizes for being clingy and annoying. And thinks that he's messing things up. Mm-hmm. And Nick says he's the one who should be sorry. At which point I scream, neither of you should be sorry. Neither of you are doing anything wrong. Right. Oh, our yes. little anxious baby. And then Isaac comes in. <laughs> With his shitty and Just grand. his knowing look. <laughs> and s- claims that Coach Singh gave Isaac some antiseptic wipes to give to Charlie. And he does. He hands over. And I'm like, but what the fuck are... Why are they not in the fucking room that they're in? Why? <laughs> and I'm also like, what are antiseptic wipes going to do for a nosebleed? I guess I just, I didn't think it was for his nose. I, I assumed he had like some Maybe, spikes. yeah, maybe. I just was like, it, it, I don't know. It just struck me as odd. But then Isaac leaves because he sees that they're having a moment. And Nick mm-hmm. panics and says he should go. And Charlie says that Isaac won't say anything. Because Isaac already knows, and he hasn't said anything yet, so. <laughs> also, you can tell how, like, anxious yeah. Nick is when he stands up, because he's, like, squeezing imaginary stress balls when he stands up. I feel so bad. Yeah, I wrote down that the intensity of the Tara Darcy inspiration kiss has yeah. completely worn off, and now he's back to reality with school and rugby, and he's panicking. Yeah. This has to be just, like, so overwhelming yes. to just, like... Because he got a lot of negative information in his Google search. Yeah. And then also, on top of that, he knows for a fact what hell Charlie went through when he came out. Well, was forced out at school. So, like, all of that is on his mind. And I'm sure he's also hearing a lot of the stuff about Tara and Darcy as well. Like, we don't see that on screen, but I'm sure that he's also seeing the the re- reaction to Tara and Darcy and that that's definitely weighing on him as well. Yeah, true. And then we go outside um, and we have Tao and Elle. And Tao is now convinced that Charlie's not going to give up on Nick and maybe they should stop getting involved. And I'm almost proud of Tao. <laughs> <laughs> I love Elle's reaction. Yeah, she's like, you, the king of, get- of getting involved? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. And then he says that he was glad to meet Elle's new friends and that he likes Tara and Darcy. He wants to know if they've replaced Tao, Charlie, and Isaac. Which Elle reassures him that they could never do because no one could replace his incredibly annoying loud presence (laughs) in her life. (laughs) I This is his whole thing, right? He's horrified of the idea that he might be replaced Mm -hmm. and left behind and i we don't see his dad Mm -hmm. we don't know anything about his dad so i'm curious if his dad did his dad leave and that's like the root of his abandonment issues i wouldn't be surprised there's definitely something that wouldn't surprise me and that's where most of like the issue with Tao comes from is that he's so terrified of being left behind and everything changing and everything being different very anxious attachment but yeah, no, I, I definitely can see that. 
so I, I kind of, I really like the way that this next little sequence is framed of like Tao and L are up like above. And then from down below, we hear Harry talking to Imogen. So then we cut down mm-hmm. to like right outside the like locker area. Um, and Harry asks if Imogen is finally ready to make a move. He's just kind of generally being an ass. And again, I say, why are you so interested, Harry? Where's your yeah. girlfriend? Hmm? <laughs> yeah. Um, and he calls Imogen a coward. And Imogen's face. Yeah, she took it as a challenge for sure. Yeah, she's just like, oh, challenge accepted. Mm-hmm. And poor Nick walks out. <laughs> Has no idea what he's walking into. <laughs> uh, and he is in his feelings as it is. Yeah. And then he walks out and all of his friends are there and Imogen is like, you did so good. And he's like, why is everyone staring at us? What's going yes. on? <laughs> oh my God. And then she asks him out in front of all of their friends. Yep. And so what else oh. can Nick do? And like the way he looks at everyone, he's like, fuck. He looks like he's going to throw up. Yeah. So of course he says yes. Yeah, of course he says yes. Because what, what else can you do in that moment? Right. It's going to be so bad for both of you if you say no. Yeah. Worse for Imogen, but they would also give Nick shit. Oh, yeah, definitely. But I'm just, I'm thinking about a lot of the different things that Nick says in the next episode. Mm-hmm. Um, And I'm like, he's definitely thinking about her in this yeah, moment as absolutely. well. And trying to save face for both of them. Um, So he says yes. And then the camera tilts up. And we see that Tao and Elle are still there and they've been listening. Yep. The whole and time. And then the episode mm-hmm. ends. But before it cuts back to Tao and Elle, Imogen like happily walks back yes. over and like giggles and grabs Ben and walks off. And I'm just like, you just know that that motherfucker has been like gassing her up and trying to oh, get yeah. her to talk to Nick so that he can keep Nick away from Charlie. I hate it. <gasps> <sighs> Fuck you, Ben. And ben Hope. Listen, S- Sebastian Croft might be the president of the Ben Hope <laughs> Club, uh, but I am the vice president. <laughs> I am appointing myself to the role. Um, <laughs> he is the worst. So then the episode is over. Yeah. What was your favorite quote? <laughs> so, <laughs> unsurprisingly, it is, I'm having a proper full-on gay crisis. <laughs> yeah. Same. <laughs> we thank you for your service was a contender. Yeah. He's on the rugby team. I joined the rugby team was a contender. But you, I, it's the most iconic yeah. line from the show. You can't not. Yeah, I love it. Um, How hard does your heart stop? Uh, I, I had a hard time rating this one because it starts out really strong. Mm-hmm. And like, like I said, like I did say at the one point, like code blue, I need help. I am unwell or whatever the fuck it was that I said, but I ended up giving it a 3.5 because like it's there. And the, like, I feel like the episode peaks like right. It peaks in the art room and then it kind of tapers off from there. I, this is, I mean, it's, it's a really well done episode, but I think it's my least favorite of the entire series thus far. I would agree. Um, there's just a lot of rugby and, and sadness. And s- rugby and sadness. Um, I was going to say angst, but like in the really insufferable way, not in the relatable way. It it this it feels like like you have the beginning which is essential. And then I'm just like, "All right, can we get to episode 5?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I always forget because, like, I I don't think about this one a lot. And then I remember that the first half of it is really good. <laughs> it's, like, really yeah. good. Like, I, like, literally my brain always thinks that the bowling sequence is in yeah. secret because I just, like, blank out the rugby game mm-hmm. entirely. Okay. I gave it a solid three. And that's because Mm. I've decided I'm going to do kind of like a curved grading scale here Mm. because the last one was like so intense the entire time for me. Yeah. That of course it was blown out of the water. But like this one, I feel like there's a lot of my heart stopping. And then there's just like 
nothing after it. Kind of like you said, it's like, yes. it just tapers out. And so I have to do like the median grade and not mm. <laughs> what my heart wants to go for. So yeah. I'm giving it a three out of five because while my heart did stop, it was short lived. <laughs> um, and so, yeah. Fair. Also, I'm Fair. like, this episode feels shorter than the others, but is it just because there's a lot of rugby in it? <laughs> and my brain's like, do do do, let's think about other stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's kind of just like a there episode. And like, as we've discussed, there's a lot that's really well done in it. Mm-hmm. I just. It is a bit of a filler app. It's a, yeah. There, There's more important things to come. And I'm just like, I want to get to friend. Friend is great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I think that that about wraps up this week's episode. So, of course, this is a bi-weekly podcast by two bisexuals, which means we will be back in two weeks to talk about the aforementioned episode five, Friend. That of bowling and excellent sweaters. <laughs> and we get Buzzkill. Yes. By Baby Queen. Um, so if you want to follow us online, we are at Why Are We Cast on all platforms. And until next time. Bye. Bye.